board meeting for Tuesday, February 12th, the year 2002. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very nice to uh, look out there and see all these faces. Uh, we don't often have a lot of company at our school board meetings. Um, we are going to uh, move through the uh, beginning part of the agenda fairly quickly. Um, adjustments to the agenda? I'm not aware of any. Oh. Yes, there is one, George. Um, if we can add deed and new business to approve the contract between the school district yep. and it's the bus, bus drivers, drivers and custodians. And custodians. And maintenance mechanics. Okay, so we'll um, add that item 12, new business okay. item D, and it's approval of, of uh, the contract, and you'll speak to that, Kevin? Uh -huh, no, I believe Marie will. Marie will, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> um, any other uh, adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, I'm gonna move on here. Approval of the January school board minutes. Were there any comments or um, changes that needed to be made after review? Seeing none, we'll move on. Those are accepted. And we'll go to comments from our high school representatives. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first topic we're gonna talk about is uh, senior privilege. Uh, right now, the SAC is uh, convening the review board, which is made up of uh, two faculty members and two students, uh, Dan Chevenel and uh, uh, Lon Kahn. Uh, right, they're going to be uh, reviewing certain, uh, uh, yeah, certain criteria um, about points being taken away and somehow getting points back. Uh, the senior class is also kind of mobilized to uh, kind of enforce on itself. Uh, infractions and stuff like that. Uh, the administration is helping us as much as they can. So right now we're trying to pull back and regroup. Uh, also, uh, recently the SAC was paid a visit by a local dentist, uh, Dr. Ordengren, uh, who expressed to us some concerns he had regarding uh, the soda consumption at the high school. Um, and uh, a, a number of students, it was a morning meeting, so there are uh, only a, a few students there, but uh, they, they communicated to us uh, the content of the of uh, what he had to say. Uh, and basically, uh, his feelings were that there's too much soda consumption at the high school, that it's done in um, uh, an unhealthy way, at least. Uh, so uh, the council took his words under consideration uh, and decided to, uh, realizing that students do, you know, have some right to choose what they drink, and uh, they, they can drive cars, so, you know, they should be able to choose what they drink. Uh, that we should post advisories so they at least know what the consequences of, uh, you know, uh, what, what they're drinking can have on their teeth and stuff like that. And uh, re really, uh, the, uh, the photo I, I believe he showed some photographs of, you know, what can happen after too much uh, soda consumption and stuff like that. And the, the actual, I think, physical sugar content of a, of a given uh, uh, volume of soda. And it was, it's pretty uh, important that they uh, get that information. So. Uh, uh, that, that was one of the uh, major things that the SAC has considered. Uh, so we're doing like flyers and things in the uh, school publication. Um, I'm just going to touch quickly on the uh, a few sports. Uh, Cape girls swimming and diving. Uh, we just wanted to mention them because they're like undefeated, 10-0. They're killing everybody in the uh, the whole state. They're projected to win. Uh, I believe they're projected to win states. Uh, boys track just won their first meet in 17 years. So, uh, <laughs> 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 um, I think, uh, also, just last week before vacation, so everybody's excited. Uh, everybody who hasn't left already. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, again, like, you know, everything's wrapping up. And, um, uh, oh, yeah, the, uh, the dance was the Valentine's Day dance was held on uh, Friday night, and uh, that went off pretty well, I understand. So, uh, that's pretty much what's going on at the high school. Do you have any questions? Been an easy <laughs> Questions for uh, David or Chris? Um, on the uh, senior privilege issue, how close are you to losing that beef? Uh, well, actually, I believe, uh, let me check. 
I think that it's maintained since the last time uh, we spoke that's to you. That's good. Um, and that's good. Um, so w whatever we're saying or doing is at least, you know, stagnating that level. Uh, the administration has been putting up a lot of flyers regarding our uh, current point status. So a lot of people are, they walk around corners like everywhere in the school and they're right there in their face. So they're being a little more careful. So. Okay, I just wanted to remind you that the way that policy was crafted was to, to make an attempt for seniors to exert positive peer influence on other seniors. But perhaps if you've got some people there who are constantly in violation of that, uh, maybe uh, that should be referred specifically to the administration. Uh, yes, that's one of the things we're kind of uh, Good. looking at. Good. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Other uh, questions or comments? Thanks. Good job. Thank Notice a little change in you, David. Yeah, this time. <laughs> um, it, it looks. It looks good. Um, comments from our middle school uh, representatives. Hi, um, I'm Brianna. And I'm Alice Evans, filling in for Lily Hoffman. Um, there's, as usual, a lot of things going on in our school. Um, one thing that a lot of people are involved in currently is the play that we're putting on this year, Peter Pan. Um, rehearsals have been, for the most part, on schedule with not many cancellations, so that's going pretty smoothly. Um, tickets go on sale in the first week of March, and performances are on the 5th, 6th, and the 7th. So it would be nice if you guys could maybe come and watch. <laughs> um, the two other things that are just went on were the career fair that I talked to you guys about last month and the variety show. Um, the career fair went really well. Mr. Madden, who is the one that puts it on every year, is hoping to have another one next year as well. And the variety show uh, took place, and it was very successful with a lot of great acts, and a lot of people attended it. Um, another thing is, that's coming up is the Honors Chorus and Band Festival. Uh, amazingly, there are 26 people from the 7th and 8th grade band just from Cape Elizabeth that were accepted, and there are seven schools that will be attending the band part of it. Um, and it should be a really great show. Okay, um, last week we had a seventh and eighth grade dance, and it was a Valentine's dance, and it was just really fun. And on March 1st, we have a social for fifth and sixth graders, and um, yeah, they always have fun. And um, we're also doing Hoops for Heart right now, and that's put on by our physical education classes, and We've earned $2,000 so far, but unfortunately, that's only half of what we earned last year, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, questions or comments? Um, just a comment. I did get to attend the career fair, and it was great. It was, yeah. uh, looked like people had a lot of fun, and I actually left wanting to become a main game warden. So, <laughs> um, I, I think it might be too late, but it was, um, it was very informative. So All right. thank you very much. Good job. We're, <coughs> we're going to move to communications. Um, in your packet, there are uh, a couple of pieces of communication <coughs> to be aware of. Uh, we do have just notice of a uh, maternity leave that will be taking place and a information bulletin of, regarding the laptop initiative, which Gary Lenoy will speak to more about, I think, in his uh, presentation tonight in technology report. Okay. Um, in, other communications? We're going to move on to comments from the public. Not seeing any... Uh, hands being raised, so we're going to move on to recognition, and we do have a good bit of recognition uh, this evening. We are fortunate to have a number of individuals that are being recognized uh, tonight, and as we do each year, we make an effort to uh, recognize all of our students at the high school who have been um, um, recognized through the uh, National Merit uh, Scholarship.
program and we have a number of students at the high school who have been either identified as commended students or semi finalist and this is quite an achievement for any school in cape elizabeth has always done very well with the number of students that they have recognized in this program so what i'd like to do is to read first what the certificate of recognition states and then read the names up and if you come up when your name is read to receive your certificate this is a certificate of recognition presented to karen stemieskin and this cert this certificate is presented by the cape elizabeth school board in recognition of outstanding academic achievement as a national merit scholarship program commended student it's not here i all that practicing i did with the name too close uh, the next student, also a commended student, Aaron Sheets. Another commended student, Christopher Roy. Commended student Alan Khan. A commended student Amanda Gann. And a National Merit Scholarship Program semifinalist Daniel Geyer. Another semi-finalist, um, Rachel Melsack. 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 That one was my fault because George helped me with that one before. The <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the last semi-finalist, Joshua Safer. Congratulations to all of you. Nice job. We have another bit of recognition. This is for one of our staff members. Um, and, oh, about a month and a half ago, I received notification from day one uh, that one of our staff members was being honored uh, through their program in their annual Making a Difference Award. And I'll just read a bit of what, of what they, uh, how they describe their award. And it recognizes those who have shown exemplary dedication and accomplishment to help reduce youth substance abuse in Maine. They have shown exactly that type of dedication through their work with the Natural Helpers programs at these schools for 15 and 16 years respectively. And it was um, our recipient and uh, someone from Deering High School. The Natural Helpers of Maine program is a peer listening and support group for school and community. And one of the major focuses of this program is to help reduce substance abuse by our youth in Maine. Both of, these, both of these recipients have demonstrated exemplary dedication to the accomplishment of that goal by working for many years, providing hundreds of teens with the skills to listen and support their peers. And we're very fortunate to have Andrea Kayer, who's been working in this program for quite a few years. And this certificate is in recognition of your outstanding accomplishment as a teacher at the Cape Elizabeth High School, as evidenced by your leadership in the Natural Helpers Program and recipient of day one's Making a Difference Award in appreciation for the Cape Elizabeth School Board.
Andrea, uh, we didn't we didn't give you an opportunity to, to uh, say anything about the program. Would you like to uh, to uh, yeah. yes? Sure. We'd like we'd like that very much. I'm not prepared, so it could be dangerous. But I do um, want to say that I said yes to this uh, um, invitation 15 years ago, and certainly didn't think that I'd be standing here today receiving this award. Uh, it's the kind of program that is uh, difficult to describe unless you've had an opportunity to experience it. It's the kind of program that um, impacts the teenagers' lives involved and the adults' lives involved. Um, a couple of things I would tell you is that my girlfriends would know of me preparing to get ready to go about 14 or 15 years ago when I was a single parent and I had three kids at home and tried to figure it all out and they'd say to me, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you're going away with 60 teenagers or so <laughs> for three days and two nights. And uh, I, just, I couldn't explain why. And, and when I say 60 teenagers, what I mean is that when we go to training, for example, we go with other high schools. And um, in, in one of the ending moments of one of the first retreats I attended, what I said publicly to those 60 teenagers and the adults there is that if if they... If they could see me now, they wouldn't have to ask that question. It's a true gift to spend that kind of time with teenagers. It refuels me and renews me every year when I have the opportunity to do the training with them. Um, every adult who's a parent or who's a teacher and, and every teenager who could ever attend a program like this and be involved in it like this really shapes you for your thinking for the future. I have a grown adult daughter who um, intervened with a suicide attempt in college when she was there. And she had been a natural helper at Falmouth High School. And she called me and said, Mom, I thought everybody would know what to do. And she said, no one knew what to do. I was the only one who knew. And so this program has tremendous merit. It's very quiet. So sometimes it can be overlooked or misunderstood at times even. But it's a program that is um, students are selected by other students and trained and have a really wonderful experience. I want to thank um, all administrators who have supported the program in the past. I can think of at least three principals, inc including Jeff, uh, Peter Dawson, and Mike Defu and, and uh, excuse me, I have Mike in class now, Rick Defusco, and uh, school board members and um, superintendents. I want to thank all of you, and it's a wonderful program, and I hope we get an opportunity to continue. It's been great for me. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Mm -hmm. We're just very fortunate to have uh, so many staff who um, are so passionate about so many initiatives. It's great, like this one. Terrific, thanks. Um, I'm going to move on now to uh, the superintendent's report. Um, a few items, um, mostly for information purposes, um, a standing item update on future direction planning. Uh, when we return from our uh, February vacation, um, we will be continuing on that first professional development day with our curriculum documentation. If you remember when Sarah Simmons presented to uh, the school board a while back, that process of curriculum mapping was just starting, and our hope is to complete the majority of that on, on February 25th. Uh, the Climate Committee has been very busy. Um, they've, um, with the entire teaching staff, um, have conducted a survey that will serve as baseline data as we look at our school climate and culture. Um, the group, right after the vacation on one of those professional development days, will be spending some time reviewing that survey, the results of that survey, and then hopefully this will lead us into doing a similar survey, conducting a similar survey for both um, a group of parents and students, uh, all, in, all in the goal of helping us establish some sort of a baseline as to where we are right now. And as we measure that over the years, we can um, see whether or not we're improving in, our, in, in the area of climate and culture. The Education Foundation has really taken on a bit more energy. They're, they are in the process of expanding their board of directors. They have several subcommittees that, that are meeting at least every two weeks. Um, they have a grant subcommittee that's, that is looking at other sources of, of, of funding and looking at uh, applying for grants. 
they've invited several people to be on some of those subcommittees and they have really found some people with a lot of expertise i just met with the grants subcommittee yesterday and and um, there i think they're really on to some some avenues uh, to really get some funding for the for the endowment fund they're looking to create just a note about the 2002-2003 calendar on the 27th of this month the calendar committee will be meeting um, so I urge any of you that have suggestions, concerns, ideas um, about next year's calendar. I believe the representatives are Marie and Jennifer to that, to the calendar committee. At least you were last year. Um, uh, but anyway, we're, we're, this is the first meeting of the calendar committee and, and any input you have um, regarding next year's calendar, uh, please get it to either my office or to one of the representatives as soon as possible. And the last bit of my report um, is actually going to be conducted by Gary Lenoy, and that is the annual technology committee report. Gary, it's best if we sort of, if we come down and join the audience, we'll, we'll see better. I can see fine from here. Would you like to do that? You can see okay? We can see fine from here. It's always a pleasure to, to meet before you and give, give you kind of an annual update and report on technology. I'm a little late this year. Usually I, I, I come the uh, month of December, but I uh, hope you'll forgive me for being a couple of months late. But we've, we've had a lot of initiatives happening with the, the laptop proposal, some of the ATM pieces that are, that are happening and fitting together, and I hope to give you kind of an overview of that. Uh, what, what's happened since the last report, updates from what happened in the last budget cycle, what kinds of things we did. Uh, ATM, uh, that's, we've got a classroom, or we're working on a classroom at the high school. Um, the MLTI has had different acronyms, but that's basically the laptop initiative. Uh, started as the governor's laptop proposal. It was uh, main learning technology endowment. Now it's the main learning technology initiative. Um, so they've changed the initials around a little bit. We'll see a little bit about that. Some of our staff development activities and some, some continuing issues that, that are ongoing. And throughout this, I've tried to include uh, a bunch of pictures so that you can see what's actually happening in the district. So we're not going to go to the ADM classroom physically, but you can see some of the things that are happening. Um, every budget cycle, we usually select one of the schools and, and we've had a revolving cycle where we'll do one school a year. And this year's update was in Pond Cove. Uh, we rotate around the, the three schools, and we've been fortunate enough to continue doing that. It puts a new infusion. Uh, we added new computers to the, to the lab, which gave us new computers or newer computers for the classroom. And that's really what's, what's important. Every year, and I'm sure you'll ask me again this year when it comes budget time, did we really need to replace that lab? The computers there probably could have got us by a few more years, but the classroom computers in Pond Cove were in dire needs of, of replacing. Um, so we put the latest and greatest in the lab where the students, where it gets used the most, and also infuse newer technology out into the classrooms. Other updates. Um, we installed, there was, a, there was an, uh, an issue, there was a problem at the high school. We have older technology there. We also have a, 
an administrative package, an administrative grading program that when we purchased it, um, it was billed as being cross-platform. And it really was cross-platform, but it just took a lot of work to make it work. And the grading program was different for Mac than it was for PC. Um, I started hearing about thin clients and thin client servers uh, a year or so ago. And we've actually installed one, uh, a Citrix server at the high school. And what it does is it, it de delivers applications over the network. Um, it can improve the performance on some older PCs. And it, it kind of takes the, the cross-platform issue away from it. The, the version of GradeQuick that we used at the high school for the Mac was much different than the, than the, ver than the Windows version. And the software developers weren't planning to, to change that. So um, we kind of get around that because even the Macs can use uh, the, the older PCs and the, and the Macs can use Citrix, and they're all using the same platform. Uh, I have, actually have a network connection and can show you that server. Um, this, is a, this is a Mac laptop, but it doesn't make any difference. I can actually connect to the, the Citrix server at the high school. You can see the, the Windows applications. I probably won't take the time to do that, but I could show you that if you needed to. Uh, and what's nice about it from a network manager point of view is that you install the applications on the server, and they get pushed out to the, the classroom computers. So I've got full suite of software on the server, and it gets pushed out to the classroom computers. I install it once and really take care of 50 computers at the same time. We've had some networking, some stuff that's in closets and behind the, the scenes that makes makes all of this stuff work. There's a, 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 some networking updates that we did. We put in a, a central network router, which is kind of like the, the big traffic cop for the network, directs things. And we've broken the network down into different zones and different IP addresses. Um, it just makes things more efficient, hopefully makes things uh, work better. Uh, thanks to Pauline, we've had some, uh, an infusion of color network printers. The, the handout I gave you was printed on those, those color uh, inkjet, not inkjet printers, color tectronics. It's a wax technology, mm -hmm. and um, they're low cost. They actually are cheaper to run than photocopiers and, then, and our laser printers, and they do a real nice job. And we have installed a couple of them in each one of the buildings at this point. And teachers access them right from the classroom by sending print jobs to these printers over the network. We, last year, we had one mobile lab that we shared between the middle school and Pond Cove. We did add a second mobile lab this year. Uh, so we now have one for the middle school and one for the Pond Cove. Um, there's still one school that's missing up there. Uh, I, I know that Jeff and uh, the high school faculty and staff would, would like to see a third one up there. Times are tough. Budget times are tough. I'm not sure we can do that next year, but it, uh, it needs to be done at some point in time. It's a great resource. Uh, the middle school one is booked all the time. The Pond Cove is being used more and more. And it's you know a lab that can be rolled right into the classroom for teachers to use. What you'll see when we... You're going you're gonna to hear me you know, with budgets, and you're going to have a lot of questions. But some of the things that we need to consider in the next budget cycle, update to the, the middle school computers. It's the middle school's turn next year, which also will allow us to update the classroom computers. We have some older technology, 75 megahertz computers, six years old. In, in, in ye nowadays, speed of computers is in the gigahertz range, not the megahertz. And certainly 75, it's, it's slow. Currently not able to do some of the stuff that we want our staff to do, like the, the uh, curriculum map, mapping database. The middle school staff went to the, to the lab and to the library to do that kind of work. It would be more convenient if we could do that from the classroom. So you'll probably hear more about that uh, later on. ATM. It's, um, it's a type of connection that we, can, we use for internet connection, but it's also part of a distance learning classroom. It's, uh, we, we've gone through a long series of internet connections. Many of you may have a modem connection at home, a 56K modem. Well, we had a 56K FRAD connection to each one of our school buildings that we were sharing. That was our first kind of internet connection. Then we moved to a, a Time Warner cable modem. And then we moved to a, 
a T1 connection. And now we're up to a T3. Uh, T1 connection is 1.5 megabits. A T3 is 45. The numbers, uh, the, the megabits may not mean anything to you, but 45 is bigger than 1.5, much bigger. And uh, the 10 megs is what's used for the data. That's what our, our internet connection is. Along with this is a, a distance learning classroom, and I'll show you that. It's, uh, it's currently being connected. When the architects were walking through the high school, one of the rooms that isn't used a lot was the, uh, was the lecture hall. So we took a look at that as our ATM classroom, our distance learning classroom. Cabling to it's been done. The equipment is here and installed, uh, soon to be fully functional. The next steps are, are technical training and teacher training. And those are going to begin to happen after February vacation. Uh, here's the lecture hall and our, what, what's, current, what's going to be the distance learning classroom. And this equipment is currently being installed. This is all part of a, a bond issue from the state. Uh, there's $110,000 worth of equipment in this room and behind the scenes in closets that make this all work. Um, the screen, the data projector, there's speakers installed in both corners of the room. Uh, it doesn't show up very well, but there's microphones hanging from the ceiling, six microphones. There's a, a great big huge teacher module. We'll get a closer look at that. There's a teacher display. So if, if a teacher is teaching on the ATM network, they can see what's going on. I've attended ATM sessions, meetings. Um, just, just a week or so ago, we went to Augusta. There was a meeting dealing with the laptop initiative, and we had representatives from Caribou at that meeting because they were there by way of the ATM network. So that you can have up to four different sites um, connected to the ATM and participating. Other sites could just watch, so it can be broadcast. So we're soon to be up and running with this. Oops, I want to go that way. Um, that desk that was down in the front of the room, this is what it looks like. Um, it's just chock full of all kinds of electronics. It's kind of a custom made desk. There's a couple of VCRs, all the networking stuff is in there. This is a, a document scanner. So if a teacher is teaching in that room and they have a piece of paper or a page from a textbook that they want to display, you put it on there and, and that can be uh, displayed. Um, there's a, a little scan, a little box right here that a student could connect a laptop to and give presentations. All of our freshman science students have to give PowerPoint presentations. So we're, we're thinking that this, this room would be a, an excellent place for that to happen. Just bring the laptop, connect it into this box. That projector is hanging from the ceiling permanently and there's a great big screen in there. This is a what's called an IP phone. It's a phone that runs over the internet. It's for tech support that deals with all of this. So you have kind of your own closed loop little network. So if, if I'm setting this up and running it, I'm having some issues, I can call the tech support right there. And there is a computer underneath here, the, the keyboard, the mouse, and there's a touch, uh, touch screen that controls all of this stuff. I don't know how this all works yet. We're, we're soon to get the training on that. Uh, I've seen it done. Kind of anxious to, to get going on it and, and see it actually work here in Cape. When we do get things up and running and when, when I figured out how to use things, uh, it might be a good workshop session to, mm. to meet in the, the ATM classroom and, and try to do some kind of a, a session there. These are the things. This is, a, this is that data projector hanging from the ceiling, a very powerful one. This, this camera, this camera is above the screen. There's a camera on that teacher. There's a, there isn't one here, pictured here, because that hadn't been installed yet. But there's a camera that looks back at the teacher there, the document, the big screen, the teacher display module, and all this networking <coughs> stuff that connects to it. And you can see it's, it's plug and play. See all the, all the connections there. It's very easy to connect. I have no idea how all of this was done. Fortunately, the company that installs all the equipment does all of this stuff for us. And they're just going to make it work, and then they're going to show us how to work it, which is what I like. Um, all of that equipment is provided at no cost because that was part of the bond issue. We do pay a, a, a monthly connection fee for ATM, and that, 
when you first look at this right here, this is, this is pretty staggering, uh, $2,075 a month. This will provide that voice data connection for ATM distance learning, but it also provides our internet connection. MSLN has been providing our internet connection pretty much for free for these past five or six years through that project. Uh, it was to end at, uh, as of last year, and we would, they're going to have to start to pay something towards our internet connection. Um, this is the cost of what the T1 was, the 358. That cost, that per month fee, 40% uh, of it's covered by E-rate. And then I, I'm, I don't have exact figures on this, but approximately another 33 is covered by the, what's replaced MSLN, MSLN2. So the bottom line when we start looking at this, I'm going to say it's around, and I don't know the exact figure, but around 470 per month will be Cape Elizabeth's cost for the internet connection in the distance learning classroom. Um, the, <laughs> we, were, we, we chose to, <laughs> I, shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't have done this. There's one more thing I want to say about ATM where we, uh, and MSLN. Where we connected all of our school buildings to fiber, that original $358 that we were supposed to get for, from MSLN is going to be increased because we have three sites connected together with fiber. We're going to get a little bit more. We're not going to get the 358 per site, but we're going to get more than that. And I have yet to see the exact figures, so that's why those were estimates. Next thing I want to talk about is the laptops. The laptops are coming, and we think, and I blew that little dramatic piece in here, but um, laptops for every seventh grade student, teacher, uh, as I understand it, any staff that works with seventh graders more than 50% of the day, the wireless connectivity, uh, there's, there's wireless connection devices that will be installed throughout the, the the teaching areas of the seventh and eighth grade, we're not sure how much of the middle school that involves, but it will be you know, a, a, a good piece of the middle school. And we may have the option to add more uh, connectivity and, and more devices if we want, let's say we want wireless connectivity in the cafetoria, for example. We may have the option to do that as part of this at, at our cost. But the ones for the seventh and eighth grade are all provided for the program. And there's uh, technical support and staff development is also part of this. Uh, this is one of their websites. Um, these are the two websites that you can go to to find information about this. The main learns one is this one right here. Uh, Nancy Hutton and Bev Bisbee, the, the, the lead teacher for the seventh grade uh, laptop initiative, attended a meeting last Saturday in Fairfield. Fairfield and, and got the, this was kind of the first go round of getting information out on that. Uh, the project, project's more about teaching and learning than about technology. It's, it's looking at things in, in a different way. Every single seventh grader next fall will have a laptop that they'll be carrying around with them. Um, don't have to think about scheduling labs or scheduling the mobile lab, or those kinds of things. Uh, if, you're, if you're in the classroom and there's some kind of a, a resource that you wish that you could access but you weren't in the computer lab, you will be able to do that. Um, so it, it could change the way we do business in education uh, when every single seventh grader has them and then the next year every single eighth grader has them. There was, was a lead teacher chosen for every single middle school in the state of Maine and that was that big meeting. The, middle, the lead teacher and the principal from every middle school in the state of Maine was at that meeting last uh, Saturday. Uh, we did apply to be a demonstration site. They were, they were going to set up demonstration sites early in the nine superintendents regions of the state. And we threw our name in the hat for that, but unfortunately didn't get picked for it. Uh, staff development. I continue to do technology staff development and the Summer Tech, Tech Academy last summer was probably the best one that we've ever had as far as enrollment. We had 33 total staff attend. A couple of those were people from out other districts, but say 31 of our staff, we've had school, we had school board members attend, we had administrators attend, um, and 16 of those 33 attended more than one day of the session. Some of them ended two, some three days, and I think there was one that attended four days. So those are the kinds of, of things that we're doing. Uh, 
other staff development in the area of technology that's happening. Thanks to Murray Bruns, we brought uh, the Gates Administrator Technology Training to Cape Elizabeth. It's, um, the Gates Foundation has a grant uh, that gives, it's as kind of a little carrot and a little incentive, if administrators go to uh, an 18-hour training module, they can earn a $600 credit towards the purchase of technology. And that, that's funded by the Gates. Uh, so if I wanted one of these laptops, I, if I completed my module, I'd have to be an administrator, get the $600 credit, and I might pay another $600 to get the full laptop. And it would be the, the person's. It would be owned by the person, not by the school district. So that, that was, uh, we brought that to Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I want to mention MAC leadership. Um, I started the Tech Academy in Cape, modeled it kind of after what Yarmouth was doing. And Yarmouth has had this program for 10 or 12 years. Next summer's MAC Leadership Academy is going to focus on uh, seventh and eighth grade staff and the laptops. And we have four of our middle school staff that are going to this five-day training session. So we've already got five, four people booked into that. One of the things I left out with this is uh, some of our professional development was custom designed by staff and a couple, an early release day and one of the professional development days I taught an iMovie class to uh, some middle school staff. If you haven't been to the middle school website and taken a look at, there's two or three iMovies on there. There's one, there's a guidance iMovie by Rachel Guthrie. There's a digestive system, Charlie Carroll and there was Earth Materials by Claire Ramswatham. And those were these, these devices right here with a digital camcorder and that device, you can bring movie footage into it and you can actually put a movie together. Get pretty sophisticated, put titles, do all kinds of things, transitions. So it's, it's kind of like a movie studio in a little box. And these are the kinds of things that our students are getting. So those are the kinds of things that they'll be able to do. So the iMovie was, was something I left out of this. The budget resources that you people fund every year, uh, I just want to point out some other things that help to fund the technology program. E-rate grants, even though it's a ton of paperwork and um, dealing with federal government, it, it is something that we do. It helps fund our uh, part of our internet connection or the ATM costs and also helps fund uh, part of the phone systems for the district and brings brings almost a little, just shy of $20,000 into the district. So E-rate does that. MSLN2, if we figure the, the $700 a month times 12 months, we're talk, talking that amount of money that MSLN2 brings into the district. Other things happen that you know maybe aren't monetary resources, but Jill Bell had a, took a sabbatical last year and, and studied video, did some, did some work with video conferencing. Um, she made arrangements to have a camera and has had, a, I'm not sure if it's still here, but there was a camera for pretty much the whole first part of the year that allowed that video conferencing to happen and a very expensive piece of equipment. So it was kind of on loan. Um, Smarter Kids grants. Um, those grants um, help fund these, these kinds of things, these projectors. It's, it's not much, but it's $600 off one of these devices. So these are the kinds of things that we've done. And the parents forums, in, in this district are very supportive. If you go to our cafetorium, we've got, we now have a great big huge screen like you saw in the, in the ATM classroom that can come down for group presentations right in the cafetorium. And that was funded by the, by the middle school and Pond Cove Parents Forums. Uh, and I know Parents Forums have also supported grants for classroom teachers, cameras and those kinds of things. So these are, these are where some of our other technology resources come from. Continuing issues, uh, we still need to, to deal with older technology and hopefully can continue upgrading that. Um, providing adequate, adequate support for our, for our users, um, both technical support and professional support. Technical support to make sure the stuff works, but as we start to get all this technology in the classroom, the professional level support to how do I use this in my curriculum. We need to, to start to uh, do more and more of that. Other issues, uh, increased demand on the network. Um, it, 
it's, an, it's really important that things work. If we're doing grading and sending attendance by way of the network and things don't work, it gets really, really critical. So these things are becoming um, a very important. All of our cabling throughout the district, um, we've installed pretty much ourselves through in-house staff or through volunteers. And when we were running at some of our low, slower network speeds, everything worked fine. But now that we're approaching some of the, the higher network speeds, we're, we're having issues. I borrowed a meter from Yarmouth and tested 20 cables in, in the Windows classroom at the high school and found 10 of the 20 cables had some issues. They didn't pass the test. So we need to start to take a look at our, our infrastructure that we built and make sure that it's ready for the next generation of stuff that we're doing. And uh, continuing our professional development opportunities. So these are things that we need to, to continue doing and continue with. Questions? Yes, I, I meant to mention that. Yes, we, uh, we've hired uh, an additional computer technician who will be starting the Monday after February vacation. Um, she's, she's currently working as an ed tech at uh, Westbrook High School. Interesting person, has an engineering background and changing careers. Um, very sharp lady, and I'm anxious to have another staff member on board to deal with the, with the many issues that we have here. Um, the $470 that we will be paying a month for these ATM costs, is that our only expense for this? Like, will it ever go up? Will these other things ever diminish or go away, these other costs? I'm not sure how firm E-rate funding is and how, I mean, that's a federal government type thing, but uh, E-rate funding is based on free and reduced lunches, and that's, that's our range that we've fallen in the last couple, three years. I think it's, that's fairly secure. Mm -hmm. I think MSLN2 wants to continue doing funding and, and paying towards that, so I think those, those are uh, things that will continue into the future, but, you know, what, whether it's guaranteed or not, I don't know. And then the other issue is, would, uh, would Verizon go up more than the $2,075 a month for the cost? Mm -hmm. I think they have a five-year contract with the state, so I think they're locked in for five years. So I think that, that figure stays for a while. So then this um, 6, 000, roughly $6,000 a year that we'll pay, is that included in your next year's budget? Yes, it is. And what about for this year? That yes. were, you already had it in there? Yes, I did. Okay. And I, I budgeted after the discounts. In other words, I didn't budget $2,075 a month for 12 months. I took into consideration the E-rate and the MSLM funding. So. Mm -hmm. Gary, does that a, um, have a town component to it, too, or is that just the school? The town library connects to our Internet connection. Mm -hmm. That's the only component that's, that's town right now. Uh, technically, you can't connect the municipal side to the school side because the main state library network, the ATM is really still a piece of the main state library network, and it's in, intended for libraries and schools. Uh, I've talked to them about trying to let, you know, because, because we're all fibered together, it would be nice if we could bring the municipal side on board, but MSLN won't allow that right now. So. Other questions? just like to put in a quick plug for the uh, Technology Steering Committee. Uh, I've had the pleasure of serving on it for three years now and uh, would encourage anyone, not only in this room but at, at home who might be watching on TV, if you have any interest in technology or what's happening in technology in our school system and in our district to uh, get in touch with Gary and he'll get you on the mailing list, the email list, and, and invite you to our meetings. It's uh, been quite an eye-opener for me. And Gary brings cookies to the meeting, and there are several, what, megabyte cookies? I, the, these things are enormous. And so a little, little incentive. <laughs> That's usually all I need to show them. That's all I need, Jim. They're big. <laughs> Not 
We're better off in the dark anyway, aren't we? Function better in the dark. I can't see us. Gary, thank you very much. As usual, a, a, a good report, very thorough, and um, the reason why we don't have questions is because you did such a good job. Um, now we're going to move on to the principal's reports, and we'll start with the high school. Jeff. Ever since I got away from the uh, uh, demonstrations with science students and Dr. Efren and everything else, I found every single month um, everything I want to say has been foreshadowed by Chris Roy, David Greenwood, and anybody else who comes before me, because I was going to talk to you. <laughs> so as a result, my report will be a little bit shorter. But I have some slightly different angles to, to throw on those things. Um, I've made it a point, really, um, in the principal's reports not to really shine too much of a light on athletics. Um, not because I don't think it's really important, it is and it's great, uh, but I think for the most part athletics tend to get a tremendous amount of attention in the community, well deserved. Um, but we are heading into a uh, uh, sort of a rubber meets the road time and we have some really, really outstanding um, athletic teams this season and I wanted to comment on a couple of them. Um, um, our indoor track team under the leadership of Doug Worthley has not only um, grown substantially in numbers in the past few years, but it's obviously beginning to win meets. This is the first time in 17 years, and Doug guarantees that the next one will be in less than 17 years. So <laughs> uh, there are um, there are states states coming up, and our team does have many students and teams who have qualified. Um, and because track athletes don't get their names mentioned a lot of times publicly, um, I want to name the students who have qualified for the states. Um, and the boys 4x800 relay: Josh Safer, who was here this evening; David Greenwood, who was here; um, Dan Bell and Doug Donovan. And the boys 4x200 relay, Bobby Needleman, Jeff Hodge, Joe Henriksen, and Justin Unger. Um, in the 55-meter dash, Bobby Needleman. The 200-meter dash, Bobby Needleman. And I will say, that's quite a performance. He's in three different events, and he was injured the entire season until the last two weeks. <coughs> in Western Maine. So he really didn't have a lot of, tra a lot of training or opportunity to get in shape. So um, pole vault, Nick Shannon. Triple jump, Joe Henriksen. Shot put, Chris Kelly. And the mile, David Greenwood. Um, the girls' 4x800 relay um, is a team of Jen Fowler, Amanda Gibson, Monica Nicholas, and Emma Bond. The girls' 4x200 relay, Danya Michaels, Leslie Harrison, Amanda Gibson, and Jen Fowler. The 200-meter dash, Jen Fowler and Leslie Harrison. The 55-meter hurdles, Leslie Harrison, Long jump, Haley Griffin, and the two-mile, Monica Nicholas. Um, so that's great performances by all those folks, and uh, it's really neat to see all the kids running, running through the hallways of the school um, um, for hours on end right after school. Um, they do some major mileage. You have to watch out for them so you don't get uh, collided with. Um, basketball players' playoffs are all, also begin this week. Um, the girls have come a long way um, over the course of the past year. They go into the playoffs as definite underdogs, uh, but they have tremendous experience to gain, and they've come a long way so far this year. Um, our boys' team is the number one seed in its conference, and their first game is tomorrow against York. Swim teams have had outstanding seasons with boys and girls winning their conferences last weekend. Uh, they head into Orono with both teams um, determined to make a run at, um, and a very strong run at, I think, at the state championships. Our hockey team has had an exceptional year. I have a, eleven and three, something like that, Jim. We're now uh, no, we're uh, thirteen and four. Thirteen and four. The wins just keep accumulating. <laughs> they're doing great, and uh, they're also heading into playoffs, and that's great. Um, so I think everybody can be deservedly proud of the work that the athletes do. It's amazing how well. Um, the athletes do, especially, I mean, I think this is a high-pressure community. I think there's tremendous expectation from the community that stu students do well academically, and for them to do as well as they do academically and athletically on top of that, it really is a tribute to the, the dedication that, uh, and to the support that they bring, they bring to the school from home. It really makes a difference. Um, Gary uh, talked about the ATM classroom, and I would have urged at the next workshop that we can actually take a look at it. Um, um, I was going to tell you what it was, but I don't need to do that anymore. But I can tell you 
and Gary may not know this, that we know that it works. Because Mark Tinkham reported to me, the assistant principal reported to me that the other day he was there with the engineer who was setting up the, uh, um, uh, the balancing, the noise balancing, and all that sort of stuff. And Mark told me that in the course of his very, very, very serious and complete work day, he was able to spend about five minutes watching part of Close Encounters of the Third Kind uh, <laughs> being broadcast from, I believe it was Skowhegan High School. Um, and then they switched to several minutes after they got bored to The Empire Strikes Back, uh, <laughs> which was a test, test film that's run by an, by an ATM site, another one somewhere in the state of Maine. So we know it works. It's really excited to have it on board. I'm done. Okay, any questions for Jeff? Comments? Yeah, quick question. Jeff, what's the, uh, generally, I don't want to tack you down for yep. anything, but uh, generally your timeline for the uh, science curriculum and the decision with that? Uh, so I'm meeting with the science department um, on Thursday, um, and I think we'll have a decision finalized at that time, Kevin. Great, thanks. Other questions for Jeff? Thank you very much. We'll move on to middle school, Nancy. Good evening. First, I'd like to bring you up to date with our professional development status. As you may recall, this year, the middle school teachers have designed their own staff development on the days that belong to the buildings. And at our last early release afternoon, I asked them to take just a few moments and fill out this lovely salmon-colored form, which I'm sure you can all read from your seats. Um, and it was just to give feedback on how things are going. Basically, this just asks what has gone well, what kinds of adjustments do you need to make, uh, what would you like, have you changed your plan, would you like to make changes in your plan, and how can I help you um, complete what your plan is. And overwhelmingly, people are really um, appreciative of the fact of having time to work on things that matter to them. Gary mentioned the group that's worked on iMovies. They've done some of those. Some people want to go on and do another iMovie. Some people want to try something else with technology. But they've had a chance to get together in groups and try some things and then also talk about what went well in those experiences and things that they want to change for the future. So I think it's a project that's well underway, being well received by the staff, um, well used by them, and will result in some great changes in teaching and learning for the middle school. Recently, since I think we had our first meetings in December, we've had a series of four meetings um, regarding our accelerated language arts program. And we wrote to all of the families who are currently involved in that program asking for people to be a member to submit interest of being on the committee. And we had one parent representative from grade five, one from grade six, and a combination a parent representing grades seven and eight, um, teachers from grades five, six, uh, the two accelerated language arts teachers, Jamie Michaud and Margaret Welch, um, Kim Sturgeon, myself, Ingrid Stressinger joined us representing Pong Cove, and we also had some parents who just came and sat in as visitors. The critical question before this group, we had two questions. Um, one, we knew that we needed to make some changes in our selection policy because part of our selection for accelerated language arts programming over the last large number of years has been um, an individual ability test that was given. For a number of years, we used the WISC. Then we realized that um, that wasn't appropriate to be using anymore for that, and we went to the Woodcock-Johnson R. Um, this last year was the last year that test was valid, so we knew we had to find something else. And it was just a piece of the information, but it was a major piece. At the same time, we also put forth this, this committee to explore the question, should we begin accelerated language arts in grade five, or would it be more appropriate to begin in grade six? And much of this question stemmed from the fact that as students come into the middle school, they're making a big transition from elementary school to middle school in and of itself. Some of the types of skills that we were asking them to kind of leap over or be accelerated in were really skills that were taught and they were focused on in the middle school and were not skills that were necessarily taught um, in the elementary school or in ele any elementary programming. And that's not a slight about our elementary program. They're, they're not elementary skills. They're middle school. They, they're work that belongs to the middle school. So we really wanted to look at that. The committee talked about a lot of things. We talked a lot about um, feedback we'd had from other parents, um, 
other people that the parents committee, the parents on the committee talked to, other friends, teachers. Um, and then we spent a, quite a bit of time developing a survey that we gave to all of the students who are currently enrolled in Accelerated Language Arts and asked them questions. And, at our, and some of the questions had about when was it great to start, what were some of the things that you remember learning that were best, why did you like being in this program. Um, the last class that we did, the um, last group of eighth graders, it also happened to be a day that I was covering the class for the teacher, Jamie Michaud, so they filled out the survey and then we had a conversation. So there was sort of an oral interview. Ingrid Stressinger was able to be with us that day. Um, Cheryl Higgins joined us. She was a member of the committee and Kim Sturgeon. As I led the discussion, they were there to um, add comments to it. After all of the work, what we decided to do is the committee took a vote and we decided we'd continue to offer the program beginning in grade five. So with all that said and done, we have getting ready to mail out, as soon as we return from February vacation, invitations to all the current fourth grade families to come to a parent informational evening on March 20th. We will send that same invitation um, in an abbreviated form to the current middle school families through our newsletter that will be going out just at the end of February as well too, to come and find out more about the program. We also have decided that for next year, our selection will focus on uh, parent input and teacher input. Those have long standing been pieces of the selection process. Um, a review of the most recent standardized test. And depending upon which grade you're applying from, those could be the degrees of reading power, the California Achievement Test, or the main educational assessment. We will also continue to look at writing samples. One will be a self-selected writing sample that you can submit, something you've worked on in class, something you've done at home that's submitted outside. And we will go to two on-demand writing samples. In the past, we have asked for one on-demand writing sample. We will now go to two. And we will make our decisions based on that. We would like to continue some of our work in another year. Sarah Simmons joined us in our meetings um, for the last couple of meetings to just really get a handle on where we were going and what we were talking about um, and maybe really look at hoping to develop an on-site reading assessment since the class focuses on analytical reading skills and writing skills and we'd like to have our assessments and selection process reflect those skills. However, we will not be able to get that reading assessment developed for use this spring, so um, we will go with this current recommendation um, for this year's uh, candidates to our accelerated programming. We have one more meeting, and our meeting is really to sort of wrap up what some of our work is um, and to look at that and also to think about what we would like to go about next and what our next direction will be. But we do want to tie our work into some of the work that Sarah and her group will do as it's a question not just for accelerated programming but a question for language arts curriculum work. So bigger than that one committee. That's where we are at that point in time on that. Um, as Gary mentioned, um, the laptops are coming. Uh, we think, we'll even add to that, the middle school, we hope. Um, the focus is really not on the hardware. The focus is really on teaching and learning and being a tool for further learning. When we were at the workshop on Saturday, the commissioner kept reinforcing to us, this is an initiative that will impact 33,000 students, 3,000 teachers, and 241 schools. So um, it is a, an initiative that will be of large scope, and we're looking forward to our part in it. As Gary mentioned, we did apply to be a demonstration site. Um, as with many projects, those have been renamed. They are now exploration sites. And our exploration site neighbor is Lyman Moore Middle School in Portland. Um, and I saw Steve Rogers, the principal at the meeting, and I told him we'd be over next week um, or the week after to see how things were going. Um, but they really won't be ready for visitors until April. And I do anticipate that some of our seventh grade teachers will be heading on over to see how things are going in Lyman Moore. Also, as we continue our preparation to get ready for this, um, at the Southern Maine Middle Level Conference that was held January 23rd, 3 to 8 p.m., um, Bev Bisbee, Rachel Guthrie, Joanne Paquette made a presentation, and with Gary's help, made a presentation, and then went to a session as well, and Susie Van Wy attended as an attendee. So we're trying to continue to go out there and see 
share not only what we're doing, but find out what other people are doing with technology so that we'll be ready. I think we'll be in a good place. I think it's important to remember this is a new initiative. Um, and as I was talking with Matt Whaley, the seventh grade team leader, um, some of the teachers are beginning to feel just a little bit apprehensive. Will I think that I'm going to walk into a classroom and see everybody working with the laptops every single day? And you know, what I'm really asking for as we begin this adventure, that at least once a trimester, everybody has some lessons that are really focused on using the laptops intensively. Um, we'll use them throughout the day, and our students will use them quite a bit for lots of things, but really to do something um, at least once a trimester. And I think people will do that. Personally, I'm here to tell you, I think they'll even do more than that. But I think if we let them know that we're going to begin in slow steps that we feel good about are better than rushing forward with something and not feeling confident about it and getting frustrated and discouraged. So um, really to move forward <coughs> with that. I will tell you, in Bev in when they selected Beverly Bisbee as their team leader, if there were ever was a cheerleader for computers and instruction, it's Beverly. Um, and even if they just follow the wake that she leads in the path through the ocean, um, we will be doing great things. So uh, we look forward to that. The other great thing we have, and to invite you all, if you can drop by at all on March 8th, that is our Wonder Years Day. And our students are, the eighth graders have filled theirs out. I feel like tonight I'm doing a vision test because I probably should have done this on PowerPoint and I didn't. But these are the folders and this is just to show you all the things that Ann Belden and her group have organized for our students to attend for their conference. It's just jam-packed, and they're getting a chance to make selections um, of things that they would like to go to. Our eighth graders are going first, and then seventh graders, and then the fifth and sixth graders will come in. Um, we had to write the program, adapt it to one of our other programs on the computer to have the computer help us organize the slots the students were going in. So with the eighth graders going first, getting theirs recorded has taken us a little bit longer time. The seventh graders will make their selections tomorrow. And if things go well, we hope that the fifth and sixth graders will follow Thursday and Friday. There are some events that are just for fifth and sixth graders. So their flyer is a little bit different um, than the seventh and eighth graders. So they will have some things that are first choices that won't be all filled up by the time um, they get them. But um, it will be a great day. It's a new day. It's a new kind of thing that we've done. We haven't done it before, so the story hasn't been written, but um, we're looking forward to the adventure with great enthusiasm. And I think just to end with, we did recently have a variety show. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, students really um, put forth some great talent and uh, want compliments to the student audience both in the afternoon and the evening. Uh, they did a great job. And that morning, um, we'd had a spelling bee. Andrew Blumenthal was our winner this year. And we had probably one of the best student audiences we've ever had for our spelling bee. So um, they're doing very well. I know the students are looking forward to February break, um, but they've also worked hard to get there. Thank you. OK. Questions uh, or comments for Nancy? I have a question. Marie? On the Wonder Years thing that's on, on 3-8, is that for all grades we'll be doing? Yes, it will be for the entire student body, um, regular school day hours. And that will take up the whole entire day? Yes, it will. Yes. We do have, um, it starts off with a keynoter, and unfortunately our keynote speaker that Ann engaged last May with <coughs> this morning, so we're now filling that space with a replacement. But uh, those are the kinds of things that happen in conferences, and mm -hmm. life will go on, and um, we have our own Wonder Year super backup person um, in Tom Frisella if all our other players don't fall into yeah. place. So we will have a keynote speaker, and um, I'm sure whoever it is will do a great job. <laughs> Elaine? I have um, two comments. Um, one is I did uh, attend the Middle School Parents Association meeting, and I got a chance to really look at the brochure and the offerings on the Wonder Years. And um, I just wanted to share with everybody that it's very impressive the variety and the um, insightful subject matter that these kids have to choose from and all the hard work that the parents and some of the mm -hmm. teachers did in putting this program mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And um, it, I really hope that if everything goes well that day and you get in good feedback from the kids um, that we would consider doing this uh, every year. Uh, a lot of work has go gone into it. and. I think each year would be easier to do this type of programming, and it certainly does build upon the Chuanki and the Kiev experience that we're looking to do in our own school system rather than sending them away each year. Um, 
then secondly i had just one last question sure about the challenge language arts program yes the committee that you had working on that i know you were primarily discussing or were concerned about whether the impact or what impact it had on the fifth grade in class based on the surveys that you got from the students and the discussions that you had was there any reason to take a look at the actual curriculum during the fifth and sixth grade year um no it wasn't actually a question that we asked them in our survey we designed our survey to really get a flavor of their feeling of when it was good and we were asking questions about balances of home workload those kinds of things that we were looking at so it didn't ask specific curriculum things i can tell you that in the eighth grade when i was talking with students um one of the things that they have always let us know because margaret does a lot of feedback with them is that the old man in the sea and analyzing that and dissecting it is not their favorite experience However, in the eighth grade, and eighth graders are getting more reflective all the time, um, they'd all agreed that this was, yes, yes, remember that. And then one young man raised his hand and he said, but you know, I know why we had to read that particular book. It's because we had to learn how to read very differently. And Ms. Welch had to pick a book that was very different from something we've ever read before and something we wouldn't have selected ourselves. And this is what I think I learned from that. And he went on to explain about reading more carefully and looking for symbolism and things. And then another student said, now that you mention it, and I think back on it, that's true. And this is what I learned. And they went back through. So even though we didn't ask specific curriculum questions about that, um, we did get a little bit of feedback. But the survey was really more designed for their enthusiasm, the workload, the stress of being in that class. That level. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Nancy, uh, before you go. Uh, there might be some other questions. Um, just with the learning, what do we call this? The main technical learning initiative. Um, I, I hear that we we're getting. We just call it the laptop. <laughs> Laptops. Thank you. I hear we're getting technical support. My concern is, um, how do you see teachers getting up and running with this as far as balancing that learning curve and also the curriculum? development and it feels like a lot are, are they uh, i'm a little anxious when i think about well, it are one they? of the things that comes with it is that there is two days of training for all of the teachers that right now is designed to occur in the summertime and that is training that is done at cape elizabeth middle school they don't have to go away for it um, when gary did his presentation we also have some members of that team that are going for some additional training by going to the mac academy and coming back and sharing with the team I think that learning curve and some of that is a, why I need to say, as the leader of the, the building, why I need to say I'm looking for something, at least one really good lesson per trimester mm -hmm. to relieve some of that pressure of I've got to throw all of these things that I've really done or figure out how to adapt them to the computer. Susan, I think a lot of that will come when they become feeling more comfortable with it and as a tool. And this is a team that has signed that mobile lab out a great deal. Mm -hmm. I can't think of one member of that team that hasn't really been down there to sign out the mobile lab. Joanne Paquette got the mobile lab schedule in September and filled in all the dates that she wanted. So, um, and as soon as she told her teammates she'd done that, they went right down there and did the same kind of thing. So um, this is a group that has really worked to put lessons on that and I think once they realize that it's not about that every moment that laptop is open and you're working on it, right. um, that it's something else that will have some really rich lessons going. And I, I think we do have to be careful. I think there can be um, something that in there that could really impact and stifle their creativity in a way in taking risks. Looking at our curriculums that way, though, also can be a great catalyst for looking at all of our curriculums and the way we do things. Why do we assess in a certain way? Why do we have certain projects? Why do we cover some material and not others, other material? So it can be a great beginning for a reason to have a discussion. And I think if we let them go at a pace they set, um, we will be pleased with the results because it will be faster than my one lesson per month, but um, they'll feel that they're in control of it. So it will work. And you think those two days will get them ready to, to be able to do that? It feels like two days should be it, enough? It, it will be. They're all pretty um, adept at using the computers anyway, mm -hmm. and they've tried them. Some of their questions are more the frustration ones. You know, the, the things break down, what happens when you do that? Um, 
And then every so often, one of them will say, well, we've got to remember sometimes pencils break too, and what do we do? Okay. And, you know, and then, oh, yeah, well, we can figure that out. We'll have a backup plan. And it's, those are the kinds of things. I think some of them will tell you, I'd, I'd rather have six days of training. Some of them will say, I was ready after the first hour. So we have that whole spectrum. But they will work on it together and work together as a team, and I'm very confident that they will do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Nancy, would this be something that you would consider with Gary for your summer workshops, additional information or additional training for the middle school people in the summer? I, I, I think it will let them tell us what they, what they need. Um, they'll have an opportunity um, if we are able to retain our professional development money and throughout our budget um, what they would like and what they would need. A number of them have come to Gary's um, camps over the summertime, though, and developed things like websites to support and supplement their social studies curriculums um, is one that comes to, my, to mind right off. And um, so I think they'll do that. They'll ask us for what they need. I think some of them will need to go to these two days first we need to see what the two days with the state look mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a window on that yet. Um, there is some talk about if with the exploration sites offering their teachers that training so then we can figure out what worked, what didn't work, and how can we design some things. And it's very easy for us to get to Portland and to talk with the people at Lyman Moore, so I think we'll get some good guidance from their experience. Um, I'm kind of lost about this one to years. Um, can, can you just give us an example of what what they might be selecting from? Did I miss sure. something? Or um, I, I guess this is a new yeah. initiative, and and it is a new initiative. And some of these and, folks seem to know. In the it. morning, um, what is designed in the morning for that day? For instance, let's pretend you're in the seventh and eighth grade. Okay, in the morning you're going to come in and you're going to go to homeroom, but then from eight to eight forty you're going to go hear the keynote speaker. And then from 8.45 to 9.30, you're going to be in a mini session in your homeroom, which will be conducted by your homeroom teacher. Um, eighth grade teachers are going to talk about some things with the high school connection. It just so happens the next Monday is Jeff's open house with the eighth grade students and parents, so they'll be talking with them about some of that information. The seventh grade is either going to do um, something with medieval history and have a group come and present to them or follow up on some Kiev experiences. Then. Um, there's a break in there, and then it, from 9.50 to 10.45, you'll go to a session, and from 10.50 to 11.45, you'll go to a session. And some of the sessions you might choose from yeah. in those two slots would be things like, um, that's not what I said. Talking to your parents can be tough. Come here, come here some tips on how to communicate so they will listen, and so you can hear them too. Important part in there uh, kind of thing. Um, leaders rule. If you would like to be a team captain, club president, student council officer, or lead an activity, this workshop will help you understand the skills, attitudes, and behavior to do a good job in that role. Best of friends, worst of enemies, making and managing friendships, um, kinds of things. What's for lunch? Um, who was Buddha? Diversity around us. Um, surfing the net. Uh, the war on terror terrorism. Um, getting angry and getting over it. And these are all, by the way, um, the, Ann Belden and her committee came and did a survey, asked for information, input from students about topics they were interested in. So this, I have two of these here, and I'll leave them here so you can pass them down and look at them. And um, this isn't some kind of a fraction network. We didn't have colored legal paper, so 5, 6 is the 5th and 6th grade folder, and 7, 8 is for 7th and 8th graders. Okay, great. I think I understand that a little bit better. Um, Thank you, Nancy. We're going to move on to Pond Cove. Tom? Good evening. I just wanted to bring you up to date with a couple of activities going on at Pond Cove over the winter. Report cards went home last Monday, and as I think I reported last year, we thoroughly revised them um, and put them to an online a database and uh, file sharing. So. What seemed like a very daunting task last year became more or less routine this year. And I really want to thank the people who made that happen. Gary Lenoy and uh, Beth Otis from the technology side and Secretaries Barbara McLean and Nancy Anger really helped out with that. Um, one part that's not quite done yet is that the teachers who love the system have to use a computer at school to do it, which is it's very time consuming to do all this. And it turns out the heat goes down over the weekend. The, uh, 
As a gesture of good faith, the maintenance department turned up the heat during a designated time when the uh, teams agreed to be at the, at their, either at, in their classrooms or in the lab to do that. And I think that's a nice spirit of cooperation. It's also, since we, we did a major revision last year and then looked at it again, this has turned out to be an unexpectedly good staff development activity to have teachers talking about expectations and assessments K through four. Speaking of staff development, I just wanted to bring you up to date on what I think is a, a very unusually uh, staff development activity around Japanese lesson study at Pond Cove. Since the summertime, a group supported by funds from the Maine Math Science Alliance has gotten an, an orientation to this practice, which is prevalent in uh, Japanese schools, of teachers examining their work and doing lessons together. And they agreed to do two lessons during the year. These teachers have met regularly from September to October to work on one 45-minute fourth grade lesson on fractions. So we had teachers from grades one through four, and we talked to teachers in grade five about what this means when you take one lesson and put it in a larger context. The uh, slightly scarier part is that all the group, make, uh, the group makes up the lesson, one teacher agrees to do it. Christine Tweedy, the grade four teacher, um, said she would do it, and eight people turned up in her room in November. We, we taped the lesson, we all took notes to watch the class, not really uh, Christine, then debriefed the lesson at length afterwards. Through this whole process, too, we have been documenting our work. Um, it, it has proven, uh, beyond the 45-minute lesson, just a great way to get together and, and talk about curriculum, particularly the Chicago math. Our next step, uh, after we took a little break, we're meeting again. We do the lesson one more time. Fran Vita Taylor will do it in the revised way. Um, eight or 10 of us will come watch again. Then for the second half of the year, since we're being funded by the Maine Math and Science Alliance, we'll probably choose a science lesson to do. Specifically, the people who've been involved, been involved in this, besides Christine and Fran, Dottie Anderson, Lynn Evans, Susan Mishu, Janet Amberger, Sue Welch, and Ingrid Stressinger, and Sarah Simmons has been around and might work on a special project involving her own studies to document the work we're doing and share some of the excitement with the rest of the staff. And that's it from Pond Cove. Questions or comments for Tom? Thank you very much. You're welcome. We're going to move on now to our committee <coughs> reports, and we'll start with the uh, finance subcommittee from this evening. Finance committee met this evening. Um, <laughs> and received some good news from Pauline. Um, the first was our, the unemployment trust fund refund. We will be receiving back $20,601. Um, and in addition to that, our rate is being dropped from 0.003% to 0.002%. So we should realize some direct savings there. And hopefully this is the second year where we've received in the area of a $20,000 refund. Hopefully that will continue in the future. Um, the last bus we bought, um, the state will be giving us $50,000 against. Uh, the way finance from the state works is you receive your money two years after you spend it, which is uh, certainly different, but that's the way we operate. Uh, so we are getting $50,000 against the last bus we purchased, and that is also $3,100 more than we were anticipating receiving. So we have two pieces of good news there. In addition, uh, Marie Prager reported out on the status of the custodian and um, bus driver uh, negotiations. And I would just like to say personally to thank Marie and her group, as well as the bus drivers and, uh, and custodian negotiators for what sounds like a very cooperative uh, negotiation. And Marie will report on that to you and uh, make a motion um, later on in the evening. Other than that, it was our simple housekeeping work of reviewing appropriations and uh, discussing uh, some accounts in the appropriations report that seemed a little high and uh, receiving an explanation for those. That's okay, thanks, question. Kevin. Um, we'll take uh, a, an update on the policy subcommittee. Jen? Um, Jim's going to do it because I was not at the last meeting. Jim. 
The policy subcommittee uh, met last Wednesday the 6th. Uh, the sole focus of the meeting was to review the proposed uh, athletic policies and recommendations that came to us from the athletic task force. Uh, we're very close to having uh, a formal proposal to bring to the uh, school board. However, there are a few people, most notably probably the student representatives on the athletic task force that have not had a chance to review the proposal yet. Uh, so we want their input. Uh, we expect to have a proposal for you next month. Okay, thanks. Um, and last, um, the building committee, Marie. Um, our last meeting on January 24th, the building committee um, came up with an option and a proposal to uh, basically take to the school board and to the town council, which was um, for next year to have uh, two classrooms, one portable at the high school, and in the summer of 2003 to start the Pine Cove edition. Um, to continue with portable classrooms in the school year 2003-2004 and to start the renovation at the high school in 2004. That proposal um, was then simultaneously taken to the school board and the town council um, last week. During that meeting, um, it was basically a, a conversation between both of our groups. And one, one of the things that came from that meeting is that the town council indicated to us that they um, very well would possibly want us to um, go to referendum on this issue. Um, there were a, you know, an awful lot of questions um, into the proposal itself and different aspects of each of the schools and what each of the schools needed. And at this point, um, the next time that the building committee uh, meets, we will start now dividing up the work to get us to um, this fall when we will actually have from the architects that we've hired um, the dollars, which is the important factor here to go along with um, both of these projects. Um, and at that point, that will be taken back to the town council, and I assume that we will have a firm decision at that point as to um, if and when we go to referendum on this project. Our next meeting is on the 27th, the next building committee meeting is on the 27th um, at 7 o'clock. And I was hoping that at our next workshop, after our budget session, that the school board would at least be able to discuss um, things that I could take to our building committee meeting. Okay, good, thank you. Um, un unfinished business? George, before yeah. we continue. Marie, is a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that the uh, funds for this building project could, in fact, be approved directly by the town council without re uh, referendum? Yes, that's true. And uh, it's also my understanding that the referendum would be a non-binding referendum? That's correct. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, other comments or questions on Marie's report? Okay, um, unfinished business. I believe that there is none, so I'm going to move on to um, new business, and we'll start with the consideration of the superintendent's nominations to administrative positions for 2002-2003. Um, at this time of year, each year, um, I'm, I'm bringing to consideration a nomination of our administrators. Um, this work needs to be done by March 1st of each year. And you have a memo that is attached that uh, is for, it does say 2001, 2002, but we will keep them for the rest of this year. And I would like to nominate them also for, uh, for the next school year, which is something that's done on a yearly basis. Um, this is not something that's, that's directly connected to the supervision performance plan model that we talked about before. Um, this is a, just a nomination process that we need to do. Uh, to nominate them for another year of service. Um, and that, that would include the principals and assistant principals at all of our schools, our district-wide 
uh, people, um, including Claire Labrie, Director of Special Ed, Pauline Business Portia, Business Manager, Gary Illinois, Technology Coordinator, Sarah Simmons, Facilitator of Professional Development, Keith Weatherby, Point 75 Athletic Administrator, and Sue Weatherby is also part of this group as Community <coughs> Services Director. Um, so I'd like to place those name and recommend their nomination to continue for 2002-2003 school year. Okay, what we need is a motion. Jim? I would move that we approve the superintendent's nominations uh, for the administrative positions for 2002-2003 school year as read. Thank you. Second, Susan. Um, questions or comments? Uh, Tom, point seven five is what it is now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions or comments? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Seven zero. And move on to, we do that with pleasure. Uh, it's just at nine o'clock. We're it's not a tremendous amount. Of if we were half an hour ago, I'd be much more enthusiastic. <laughs> and you all know what I say about you anyway. So we'll just um, consideration of a teacher request for additional year of unpaid leave of absence. And this was in the package, um, and I think presented also in Tom's notes. Yes, and again, it's a, a teacher who is requesting a second year of uh, child rearing leave. Um, there has been a precedent in the past that you have uh, considered this. We are in a position where we are very fortunate to have a person in that position who um, is doing a fine job. Uh, there is no financial impact um, on the district uh, for this person to continue for one more year on an unpaid uh, child rearing leave. Okay, thanks. Um, we need a, a motion. Over here, Jim. I would move that we uh, approve the additional year of unpaid leave of absence for uh, a teacher as requested. And a second. Marie, thanks. Questions or comments? Um, seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Uh, consideration of a proposed high school uh, baseball trip to Delray Beach, Florida. You have in your packet um, information with regard to um, a high school baseball trip and a, um, uh, I believe, also a softball trip. Mm -hmm. um, the practice has been that the information is presented to you at this meeting. There wouldn't be any action needed at, at this point, um, but this is an opportunity to ask questions. Um, I think there are representatives here, and I do. Keith usually. Uh, when, uh, when he is able to be here, um, has asked me to move these kinds of things up on the agenda. So I do apologize that it slipped by, but that's usually uh, something that Keith does. So uh, I know you, both of the coaches that are here have enjoyed the meeting. Um, <laughs> but usually we try to move you to the front of the agenda if we can, but it just kind of slipped by because uh, Keith, I don't know if people realize it fall. And like, is he having his surgery now? Though, but he's, he's, no, he's, he's having the surgery the week after the week vacation. After. So anyway, um, the information is here. I think the coaches are here to ask to answer any questions that, that you may have. So if you could kind of come forward, and I'm sure there are some questions from the school board. And we do have um, the board is uh, all of the members of the board have had in their packet the details of the proposed trips. So the thing that we're really looking for right now is just any clarification for them. We're not going to be voting. We're really just going to be sharing with you um, a consensus about moving ahead with the plan or, or holding back on that. Um, are there questions from board members? Jim. Uh, just a point of clarification. I think I know the answer, but for the other people perhaps, uh, for, all of those team, for either of those teams, this is totally voluntary and will not affect a player's uh, status on the team with regards to playing time or starting position or anything come season. This is, this is purely extraneous from the regular program, is that correct? My whole team's going, so. Yeah, but I, I just wanted, uh, if, it, if this were to come forward again, uh, I just wanted understood that if a kid weren't able to go or didn't choose to go on this trip, that it wouldn't affect their position on the team. That's a, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I'm, I'm guessing then. Okay, I, I do have a comment. <clears throat> there's, there's ample precedent for us to give you a consensus to move forward with this trip. Um, we've been doing it for a long time. But I, for one, think that there has to be a time when we say, stop, let's pause and take a look at these through a different glass, a different lens. And the lens that I'm looking through 
right now is the lens of the overall budget for the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Last year, when we entered into budgets, we were faced with a $400,000 shortfall in general purpose aid to education. Fortunately, our legislators were able to have that significantly reduced. However, one of the things we did do last year was look at the concept of imposing activity fees on all athletics and all co-curricular activities. Jim Rowe did a, a super job of looking into that and we as a board decided not to move forward with that. However, under pressure from another body of, in this town, we did agree that we would revisit the subject this year. And we are revisiting the subject of imposing athletic and co-curricular participation fees on all students, not just in the high school, but in the middle school as well. So here are my concerns. My concerns is that I used a number of 20 students per team going um, on these trips. Is that anywhere near close? 21. You have 21? Have 13. 13. Right. I'm just taking the varsity. All right. Well, I will just use the number 20 then, if you don't mind, just as an example. Based on that, I assume that we are going to be raising a total of $30,000 to accomplish this trip. Your, your booster groups are going to be raising that, not that we're funding this. And I want to be clear, the school department is not funding this in any way, shape, or form. $30,000 represents 60% of what we thought we might raise to imposing an activity fee on all students last year. My concern is that if that two teams can independently raise $30,000, 60% of what we thought we might raise, that the pressure will build for us to impose those athletic activity fees. I, for one, am opposed to imposing a fee for play. Um, I think sports and co-curricular are an absolutely critical piece of the education process in turning out uh, well-rounded young citizens when they graduate from the school. So I am opposed to uh, putting that fee in place and I really don't want to have to uh, get into a battle over that. But again, there is a, there is a chance to say, that, well, if you can raise $30,000 just from two teams, I wonder how much you could raise from every single team going everywhere. The second concern I have is that I have noticed, uh, and I've had family involved in uh, both JV and varsity sports in town, Little League, et cetera, et cetera, is that each year there seems to be an increase in the pressure for doing a trip like this or doing something extraordinary in the way of a fundraising activity. So we are continually going back to the public trough saying, will you pay for, help us pay for lights or snack bars or this or that or the other thing to make our program better. And yes, they all make the program nicer, but I don't believe that they're necessary to the program. I think that for more, all intents and purposes, the school board does provide sufficient funds to run a well-rounded program. And I am concerned that more and more teams, as we, as we give a consensus that this is okay to do, will be coming up with that which leads me to my final concern, is increasing the, the pressure to raise public funds in this town in order to accomplish such activities. Uh, at any given time during the spring and summer, uh, we have a designated group who has the bottle shed, for example, and another team who didn't quite get the bottle shed is running around town collecting bottles and things like that, uh, and competing, everybody is competing with each other for what eventually, I think, is going to be a limited pool of charitable funds available to us to continue doing this. This town is extraordinarily generous in uh, what they do, and I think that, frankly, I just think that it's time to take pause. And I want you to understand that this is not a reflection on baseball, softball, baseball boosters, softball boosters. I just decided that this was the time. And if lacrosse was here, I would be saying the same thing to lacrosse. And if soccer was here, I would be saying the same thing to soccer. If hockey was here, I would be saying it to uh, hockey. So um, I, I really just can't give you my yes or indicate that I, I support this thing does not mean I do not support sports in Cape Elizabeth. I absolutely do. And I absolutely support co-curricula. But I do have 
a lot of concerns, and those concerns are building in the face of what goes on with our budgets. Thank you. Um, other questions or comments from board members? I think that Kevin started off by saying the general, generally, the consensus of the board is is to um, is to uh, allow the the fundraising to, to move on. He also pointed out that it's really it's we're not really um, uh, approving or withholding um, school funds. It's re it really is private funds, but since it is related to the school, it has to go before the board for approval. And I'm guessing, unless I hear one of my fellow board members pipe up here, um, that we would, that the details that you've provided are satisfactory for us, and that we would, um, I think Jim brings up a good point, and I think it's probably important, in, uh, although I hadn't really thought of it before, in these kinds of trips that um, the players know that their status um, and their their playing status as they as they start the sport is not going to be affected by either participating or not participating in the trip. Um, so I think that's, that's probably a good thing uh, to think about. But it seems as though we would encourage you to move, move ahead. Um, and uh, as the time gets closer, um, it will need to come for a final approval um, before the board. So um, did you have any questions of us or comments for us? Okay. We do appreciate your patience, and we also like to see faces out in the audience. So I, I think Tom was kind of... Um, Maybe not uh, fully forthright in terms of the, the mess up on the agenda. So thank you, thank you for being I do, I here do tonight. Have a Are we supposed to uh, return, or is this it for us? No, it would. You we would get, we would get a final, um, a sort of a final report on who is going, when, when they're going, how many kids, um, et cetera, and, and we would give a sort of a final review. But does he? Does he have to come? Does no, no, no. I think yeah, I just don't you. Know if I had to come back to this meeting. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we promise we'll move it up again. <laughs> just wave your arms in the back if you do. Well, but we will. Do, we'll just we'll just get a, a sort of a final report of your of your activities, and and it will be, come before the board in terms of um, the the final details of who's going. Right. We the softball team does have you know we have finalized everything. We finalized on the number of kids that are going, uh, what time. Potting, uh, who we're playing down there, we have 10 games down there. We know everything about that week, as well as Keith uh, Weatherby um, has all that information. So. Okay, and the trip is planned for? Uh, that April vacation, we're leaving the, uh, I have my glasses here. 13th. Yeah, we'll leave we, and we, have the, we do have the details, I'm just not digging through the packet here. 13th and joining the following Saturday. So, I mean, everything is, you know, I think I think we're basically saying that that uh, we're giving you the go ahead to keep moving, but but it will need we will need the final details, and that would be reviewed at the next board meeting. Um, the, uh, the practice usually the school board doesn't take action on an item that's presented on the same night. There's usually there's a one month um, time period that uh, the board takes and they take action the following month. It's the process that they follow. Okay. Thank okay. Thanks. Thanks for your patience tonight. Um, we're going to move on to uh, a motion for a uh, approval of um, contract negotiations. And Marie, are you going to present that to us? Um, earlier this evening in executive session, we talked about the um, negotiating, negotiated contract with the bus drivers, custodians, and maintenance mechanic bargaining unit. Um, and I would like to um, make a motion that we accept um, the contract as discussed um, for that bargaining unit. Okay. Um, I need a second. Kevin, um, questions or comments on the, those nego negotiations? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Uh, before we make a motion to adjourn, and there will not be um, any executive sessions this evening, um, so we will adjourn and the public um, meeting will end. Uh, the school board workshop meeting is scheduled for February 26th. The topic is the budget. And as well, um, I believe that we'll take a look at um, the information from the building committee. Um, and I believe also at that time we will entertain more of a, um, 
a discussion in terms of fee for participation. Is that correct, Jim? Okay. Um, planning committee meeting is uh, on February 27th, 2002. Um, let me go back to the workshop. I believe it's probably at, at the, the high school library and we usually start at 7.30. Would that be? No, it starts at 7. 7. Workshop 7. Workshop yeah. starts at 7. Okay. And our school board meetings. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, school board workshop then, just to be clear, February 27th at 7 p.m. The topic is the budget. These are the public um, budget. No, Check. February 26th. <laughs> One more time. Would someone else like to do the uh, dates <laughs> tonight? You did a pretty good job last month, George. <laughs> Jim, Jim, could you run through the dates for us? <laughs> the school board workshop, February 26th, 2002, high school library, 7 p.m. The topic will be the budget as well. The building, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the uh, work of the building committee and their proposal and additionally um, another discussion of uh, fee for participation. The planning committee meeting will be February 27th, 1 p.m. in the William uh, Jordan Conference Room. Policy subcommittee meeting Wednesday, March 6th, and that's at noontime in the Jordan Conference Room. And then our regular school board meeting is on March 12th, um, preceded by the finance subcommittee meeting at 6.30 and the bo regular board meeting at 7.30 here in the chambers. Need a, a motion to adjourn this evening's meeting, please? <laughs> I move that we adjourn. <laughs> and a second. Marie, thank you. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Thanks. Good night. Mm -hmm.